We finally get a big update on Marvel's Avengers on June 24th after months of silence and the head of the developer Crystal Dynamics even said that September 4th is an amazing release date for them and that it will give them the time to make a great game. Good to hear so no more delays from the sounds of it and now leading up to this big reveal we already got some brand new footage, screenshots and learned some awesome new info that all sounds very promising. So I want to do a rundown in this video, a like would be super appreciated and let's go. You can win the digital deluxe edition of Marvel's Avengers in my giveaway, the link is in the pinned comment, you have to be a subscriber of the channel as well before you enter and I will reach out to the winner in early July. Let's start with some interesting takeaways from that small trailer that was shown to announce the June 24th reveal event. One of the first things you notice is Hulk in the Planet Hulk armor and we actually see the Abomination here very briefly on the ground as well. And we already saw the Hulk fight this villain in the E3 2019 trailer but this likely after you won that encounter. And I think this is also one of the hero chain missions. And I will go more in depth on that in a second because we learned some very interesting info regarding that part of the game. We see Kamala Khan climbing here. But there's also this interesting small but awesome looking concept art there. And Thor is fighting here in a sort of digital space. And this could be something that the developers use to test the characters. But it's more likely that this is the harm training room. Something that was actually also used way back in October when people got to try Miss Marvel. Games Radar describes it as a training simulator where enemies come in waves at you with each wave increasing in difficulty. There would have been 15 waves of enemies according to Noisy Pixel, including 12 new enemy types, men with missile launchers, robots with energy swords, toxic gas grenade man, and with the final enemy being a dreadbot. And we learned thanks to the leaked achievements that there will be at least 20 enemy types in this game and we can fight a lot of them here in this training ground. And I really like content like this so let's hope that it's actually a cool activity that you can master as well with some fun rewards at the end. The harm training room was also mentioned in an article about accessibility where they also talked about having fully remappable controls character associated subtitles and campaign relevant closed captions. And overall we should also have a better representation of the diversity of the real world in this game. So during A day we should for example see people with a disability in the audience. We also got a look at a new character called Cerise, an inhuman NPC in a wheelchair looking very awesome. And I will link to that article with everything on accessibility in the video description and they should also add more of these features post launch, so good on them. Going back to the trailer we got Sebi say that this might be Nick Fury who we see here. Very interesting indeed. I love this concept art of Kamala looking over the A-Day crowds. And we see quite a lot of new Hulk footage starting with his thunderclap against many AIM robots. And AIM is of course the main villain of this game. Do we see some new Iron Man outfits here in the concept art? Well, we totally do in the small footage they showed. And we by the way also learned that the invisible Iron Man suit will be in the game. No person know who I am on Reddit shared this image and it was also confirmed on a podcast that I will touch on a little later in the video because it included a ton of new details. And then we see Black Widow with her staff and we already know that she can use a ton of weapons from her arsenal in this game as we already saw in the A-Day demo as well. And she will likely play quite similar to Lara Croft from the Tomb Raider games that Crystal Dynamics of course also made. Explorer on Reddit also noticed this art of Black Widow where she has a sniper so it might be that we see that in the game too. Although seeing concept art doesn't always mean that it will be in the game but they are showing it in this small trailer so it might be a hint. We see Iron Man use his lasers while flying and also doing this awesome whirlwind laser sort of attack. And in the podcast that I talked about earlier, Scott, the CEO of Crystal Dynamics, shared that you can upgrade the lasers from Iron Man to have them be more accurate, but then you are also more focused on one enemy at a time. 
while you can also upgrade your rockets like your homing missiles and then you can likely easily hit multiple enemies. The gear we can collect should also have an impact on our heroes and there are actually different manufacturers that all have different bonuses like Stark is one of them but also Pym and the example that was given was that if you for example hit Iron Man's lasers long enough on an enemy while you have Pym gear equipped you trigger these Pym particles that will deal extra damage. On June 24th we will likely see that in action but the focus will overall be on the war table and that's really our menu from which we can select the next mission that we want to do. And Scott confirmed that you can play the game online and offline and that likely has an impact on the amount of missions you see but what you can for example expect is to see the main story missions for the single player campaign and they will have the A icon from the Avengers indicating that this is a story mission. While you will also have the Warzone co-op missions that you can do alone but also online with up to three other players. And now we learned about a new type of mission called Hero Chains that as the name suggests focus on one specific hero and we will see the icon of the hero indicating that it's a mission dedicated to them. So this unlocks after a hero joins your roster because that's of course the story of this game. After a day everything goes wrong and then the Avengers break up and throughout the campaign you try to recruit them again to fight aim that is getting more and more powerful. So if you by playing through the single player campaign unlock the Hulk you can use him in a Warzone co-op mission but then also unlock the hero chain missions for that specific Avenger. And these missions sound awesome, so for one you will learn what this character did between A-Day and now because a few years have passed since those events. So that means that we will be fighting specific bosses that make sense for that hero. So maybe this is where the Hulk will be fighting the Abomination. And these hero chain missions should also teach you more about each Avenger, especially if you only know them from the movie. Cool part about these missions as well is that you can get custom rewards for that specific hero. So if you play a hero chain of Thor, then you get rewards that are nice for that character. And Scott mentioned that for example at the end of the hero chain missions, so when you complete them all, you get a unique outfit for that hero that you only get after these missions. And we already saw a cool new Thor outfit at the end of the new footage they released. Not sure if that is the rewards, but I already like the sound of this because when you then wear that outfit, everyone knows, oh, that guy completed those hero chain missions. There are also outfits exclusive to specific editions or to pre-orders, and there will be outfits that can only be bought through microtransactions. And I don't think they've shown them yet, but I do expect that some of the coolest suits will be sold exclusively in this shop and I've said it before I hope there's a balance and actually him saying that there's like an exclusive outfit locked behind these missions does give me some hope like that sounds awesome and I totally think we should expect new hero chain missions when new heroes release for free post launch so that means new story missions about that hero too. And apart from the new maps, heroes and other free content, the post launch sounds super ambitious. They've shared before how finishing the main story won't mean that advanced idea mechanics or aim is defeated. Like the story of course is that they step up when the Avengers disappear to help people but then slowly turn into this anti-hero organization. And inside AIM there should be villains that have their own big agendas that we might learn a little bit about during the main story and that we actually see happen in the months or year after the launch of the game. That is at least what Scott from Crystal Dynamics teased. And if they really can pull the mystery off where you look at the specific story moments and think hey this might be something that we see in the future then that would be awesome if that could be like a hint at a big new content drop that would launch later on. They want us to play this game for a really long time after launch and of course the gear grind will be there so if you want a specific drop then there are so called boss chains that you can farm. But you can also spend some time finding collectibles in the single player and then for example read about a trial that happened after a day. So Scott teased that if you really want to dive deep into the fiction that Crystal Dynamics created for that game 
then you can totally do that. Let's see how it all shakes out. I think you agree that it does sound promising, right? Let's hope they can pull it off, because having a fun Avenger game to hop into for years should be awesome. I will totally be covering the event on June 24th, so subscribe to miss nothing regarding that. A like on the video would be super appreciated. And don't check out my previous video on The Lost of Us Part 2 and my hands-on impressions after playing the game for 2 hours. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.